A study commissioned by Beef and Lamb New Zealand and New Zealand wine growers has revealed that our producers and growers are well positioned to take advantage of a global regenerative agriculture trend. With financial support from the Ministry for Primary Industries Sustainable Food and Fibres Futures Fund as part of its Fit for a Better World programme, the research looked at three of our key international markets, the USA, the United Kingdom and Germany, to understand the existing markets there and the future potential of regeneratively produced food and wine. Beef and lamb has always had a role to look for extra value from the marketplace and we could see from our social media to monitoring that we do in several of our main export markets that regenerative agriculture was becoming a, a topic of um, conversation amongst our conscious foodie um, consumers and it was starting to get past that um, fad into a bit of a mainstream trend so we knew the, to be on the front foot that we actually had to have a look at what was driving this conversation and to see what the opportunities for New Zealand were. Customers and consumers are looking to purchase products that, that are no longer just doing less harm, that are actually doing more good. They're looking to purchase products that um, are better for the planet and better for their own personal health and well-being, but they've also got to taste great as, as well. Um, and regenerative agriculture is becoming a bit of a shortcut um, for consumers to, to get those attributes as well. From what we can see from this study, the opportunities are absolutely um, worthwhile and we can see that that trend is going to continue to gain momentum over the coming years. New Zealand has this massive opportunity to get out in front and to become a bit of a leader in this space. This home property up here at Woodside west of Greytown is 150 hectares. Dry land, very stony soils, drought prone. We finish bulls and do some dairy grazing. And the other farm is 10 minutes down the road um, at the top of Lake Wairarapa. That is an ex-dairy farm um, that's fully irrigated, good silt soils and poorly drained in a sensitive catchment and we grow cash crops and finish lambs and do the odd bit of cattle trading down there. For us, regenerative agriculture is being more resilient and working with the natural elements rather than fighting against them. In this paddock, this is uh, sort of what we've done traditionally, just a, a ryegrass and white clover mix, probably about five years old. We're experimenting with diverse species pasture mixes now and a range of different establishment techniques, whether it's um, spraying out and sowing in in the autumn or just under sowing directly into species like this, having pretty good success with both techniques and we're moving into sort of just a bit more diversity with, with a range of clovers and a range of different grass and herb species, um, just getting away from that traditional ryegrass we're finding coxfoots and, and bromes and um, stuff like that to persist and, and do better up here in our um, summer dry environment. New Zealand wine growers agreed to co-fund the report and really that was because of the strong parallels between our industry. We're both primary producers, obviously focused on producing an amazing product from the land and that we take that to the international markets across the world. So we're kind of deeply involved in how consumers perceive our industry and obviously what are those amazing opportunities that we have to strengthen our brand and make sure we're doing the right thing into the future. The strongest point that comes through regenerative with us is actually moving and pushing ourselves beyond sustaining and maintaining, is actually to give us that motivation to look at our land in a little bit broader picture in, in terms of ecology, and actually that momentum to actually improve our whole system and actually learn and innovate into the techniques that will actually improve our land into the long run. We want results that not only make the best wine that we can possibly make, but actually contribute more to our whole ecology and also to our community's environment as well. We know that if, if we only put vines in a field that is a monoculture and there is not a lot of strength in the monoculture so we want to increase diversity and we want to be building the soil and hopefully we'll see kind of improving results going forward. 
We're at our Kotunga vineyard, which is right here on the Martinborough Terrace. It's all Pinot Noir, and it was planted uh, 20 years ago now. Well, this vineyard here has been organic since uh, 2016, and it's kind of been in a system of limited tillage. So obviously under vine, we're allowing things to grow. Uh, into row, we're cropping, um, and we're trying to build resilience and organic matter into our soils to kind of promote longevity of vines. Everything's a little bit of an experiment. Uh, this year um, we've been putting in cereals, uh, lupins, beans, peas now that we can plant peas in the Wairarapa, macro pore builders like radish, just a dozen or so different plants, some flowering to bring in beneficial insects as well. When we talk about regenerative agriculture, um, it's about really about building that soil. Uh, we talk a lot about microbial populations in the soil, what's beneficial and what we see might be beneficial in the future. But ultimately, wine quality is a big part of that story as well. So here in Martinborough, it's all about high quality Pinot Noir and Chardonnay and how do we develop that. And part of that is building our soil resilience to build our vine resilience to um, age these vines, you know, when we plant a vineyard, we expect it to be 50 years old, you know, so I'll be retired when somebody else is reaping those rewards. Um, so how do we make sure it lasts that long?